All right, I'm looking at um, bio biology. Algebra 1, this is page 1101. And on the review, on page 46, I had a student contact me uh, just this week and say, can you please help? <laughs> uh, there's two, uh, I'm going to show you two problems here. Um, these are on page 46 near the bottom. <clears throat> we're going to talk about how to simplify these. So we have, we're not allowed, algebra um, mathematicians have a rule that you can't have the same letter on the top and on the bottom. So we have to simplify that. Um, if we just had numbers, okay, like if we don't, so we don't see a number up here, so we can assume the numerical coefficient is one, <clears throat> and then the three is on the bottom. So we are, we know we're gonna definitely keep the one on the top, the three on the bottom. Okay, but then, and then we have a negative divided by a negative. So remember the negatives out front, um, <clears throat> the ones in the numerator, ones in the denominator, so we're dividing. Numerator divided by denominator. Um, think about a fraction like, let's just make one up here, you know, negative 14 over negative two. So to simplify that, we would divide 14 divided by two and get seven. And then a negative divided by a negative means the answer would be positive seven. Okay, now that's, if it were the other way around, let's say we have negative seven over negative 21, we reduce that fraction. You know how to reduce fractions, so that would be one third, and again it would be positive because they're both negative. If only one of these was negative, then the answer would become negative and it would go right out front. Okay, of the whole fraction. So let's keep going on this problem here and see what else we need to do. So we have a squared on the top, a on the bottom, b squared on the top, b on the bottom, and here we have a c squared on the top, c squared on the bottom. So the rule, if you think back to page 1097, the rule is whichever exponent is the largest, that's where you're going to subtract, and then you keep that uh, variable on that side of the fraction line. So looking at the a, we have two, excuse me, a to the second power. Here I have a to the first power. So it's like saying I have two a's up here, one a down here. Well, these two are gonna cancel out. Okay, so a squared, which is a times a, down here I just have one a. Anything divided by itself cancels out and becomes one, all right? So all I'm left with is an A, and notice it's on the top. Or we could just think of it as the larger one, the two is on the top, so when I subtract one, then I'm just gonna leave the A up here on the top. Now you're gonna do something similar with B. Now what happens with C? Well, let's C, okay? So I have C squared on the top. If we just had this all by itself, it would be like C over C, C times C over C times C, C squared and C squared, all right? This would cancel against this, this would cancel against this. So it would just become one. Or we could think about this as being C, and then two minus two, this exponent here minus this one, which gives me C to the zero, and anything to the zero power is the number one, okay? So again, that's one of the little tricks that we just have to memorize and know and, and keep using as we continue working through algebra. So I'm not gonna totally finish this one for you, <clears throat> but hopefully that decodes it enough that you can kind of take it from there, all right? Now let's look at uh, this one here. We have 25 on the top, negative five on the bottom. So if we just had that, could you simplify that? If that was a fraction, 25 divided by five, okay, that would give you a number. Let's put it on the top. So if we have a fraction and we end up with a whole number, that goes on the top. So 25 divided by five, because it's a positive divided by negative, then the answer is gonna be negative. So we could just put the negative out front. Let's leave the five here on the top. Now, let's subtract the exponents. Here, we have x to the third on the top, 
x to the 1 on the bottom. So we're going to subtract 3 minus 1. And where was the larger one? It was on the top. So that's how we know that the x squared will be in the numerator. Now I want you to finish this one, do the same thing with y, but notice we're going to subtract the exponents here, 2 minus 1, but the larger one was on the bottom. Okay, so that's your clue where that answer is going to go. So we don't have anything that completely cancels out. We are going to have an x somewhere in here, and we are going to have a y somewhere in here. And uh, we might have an exponent on one of those. All right, I'm not going to take that one any further, and hopefully you can do the other two problems in this little section on page 46. And then uh, check the score key right away before you move on. All right.